Well, up first today, the legendary drummer of the iconic British rock band Def Leppard, best known for his music, is now creating beautiful art on canvas. That's right, and you're going to be able to see that artwork and come meet him this weekend at the Wentworth Galleries in Bethesda and Tyson's Galleria. So please join us today in welcoming none other than Rick Allen in the Fantastic. house. Hey, Rick. That's Good to lovely. see you. What a nice welcome. Thank you. What a nice uh, opportunity for us to get to talk to you. Before we get into your artwork, Let's talk about your amazing career as a musician. And yeah, you started when you were 15 years old. Well, I've been playing drums since I was about uh, 10 years old, and uh, at the ripe old age of, sort of 14, I decided I wanted to give up the business. So uh, you know, it was it was a difficult time. I was playing with local bands, and they were all playing uh, cover songs, and I really wanted to break out and do something more. And um, we saw this uh, article in the in the newspaper and it said leopard loses skins so I went and I, uh, I got the uh, I got the audition and uh, I, I got the job so I never looked back so. were you the youngest in the band at that point yeah I still yeah. am yeah, still <laughs> they, they, they'll, they'll never let me forget that you know. and was your mom okay with you joining the band at age 15 um, yes and no uh, she she was really happy for me that uh, that I was doing something that I really loved uh, the only problem was myself and my brother we were both uh, involved with uh, with Def Leppard, um, you know, once they got the uh, the, the job, and uh, so when she said goodbye, she said goodbye to both of us. She lost two sons to that band, didn't she? Yeah. So <laughs> what was that like, being a part of a group on that level at such a young age? Um, at, at the time, um, I was young, and I just I was just loving doing what I love to do, you know, best. And I, I wasn't really seeing into the future, but now when I look back at uh, the whole experience of it, it's just been a huge gift. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, to have come through everything that I've come through, and and be here today is, Let's is talk a blessing. About that, the accident. Take us back to 1984, New Year's Eve, and the car crash. Yeah, it was actually New Year's Eve day, and um, I was out driving in the countryside, and um, this. Uh, this guy wouldn't let me pass, and uh, I started. Uh, I started to lose my temper, put my foot down, and um, as I overtook him, I uh, I overshot the corner, and I ended up rolling the car. Um, uh, fortunately, the sunroof was open, so I actually left through the through the sunroof. Uh, it took my arm. The seatbelt took my arm. I landed in a field, uh, but. Um, you know, part of the collection. You know, talking about angels, there were uh, there, were, there were a couple driving down the road. Uh, you know, shortly after uh, shortly after me, that must have been right, pretty much right behind me. And um, Eileen, she was a, a district nurse, and Roger was a he was a policeman, and uh, they took care of me. And I think they probably saved my life. You were referring to your latest collection called Angels and Icons, which is that's being shown at the Wentworth Gallery in Bethesda and in McLean. When did you begin to get into painting? Um, I started out uh, with photography many, uh, many years ago. The camera became uh, my friend because I could express myself with my camera in a way where I couldn't, I couldn't do it with words. And um, um, when I uh, when I came across uh, Wentworth. Uh, gallery, they encouraged me to start uh, painting. So this is a pretty involved process, you know, uh, starting out with an image, and then uh, then then I start using acrylic paints and mixed media, and I start building these wonderful images that you see here. What is your um, fascination with the American flag? I'm, I'm fascination with the American flag is the fact that I'm here. Uh, I've been here since 1980. I've been living here since 1991, and my idea of America before I came here versus the reality of America when I got here, um, it, it's really it's really been an eye opener. And America has given me a lot of freedom uh, to be uh, creative. You said that you have a passion for photography. Mm -hmm. When did you develop that passion? Um, I think uh, from around about ten years old, and just uh, taking pictures. Uh, my grandfather that. gave me a gave me a camera, <laughs> and that was that was my first start in in photography, 
and where I live as well, or where I lived growing up, a uh, beautiful, you know, countryside. So it was it was easy to uh, to appreciate that, and especially taking pictures of it, then I just appreciated it even more. Can you do you mix your photography with your paintings ever? Yes. So that's what you do. Yeah, I'll start out with an image, and then I'll start to develop it and and start to add paint, and over sometimes long periods of time I come up with these, these pieces that you see and, and they're just they're, they're, you know they're, they're really special. You're going to be showing them tomorrow yes. and you'll be making appearances at both locations? Yes. And you're inviting people to come and take a look to purchase these um, various works of art and a portion of the proceeds will go where? Um, it goes towards uh, helping our wounded warriors um, uh, because of what I went through um, as soon as I came into contact with our, with our wounded warriors, I realized they spoke the same language as me. And I'd suffered for a long time in silence. I didn't even know what PTSD was. And then when I met up with uh, some of our warriors, I, uh, I, I realized that I, I suffered from that myself. And, and, and through that meeting, um, I'm able to heal myself, uh, you know, through being with them and spending time with them and working with them and it's a big part of my life these days. You have been such an inspiration to so many people, especially to wounded warriors, because you kind of share that. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, you have never stopped. You're like the Energizer <laughs> Bunny. I mean, you, you continued, what, 30, 40 years with the band? Yes. After you lost your left arm, how did you continue to be a drummer? Um, I, I developed, uh, my friend helped me develop these foot pedals so I could, I could, play, uh, I could play electronic drums using my feet. And, and that's that's how I that's how I go on. And the fact that uh, we all really love each other, all the guys in the band, you know, through the ups and downs, um, we, we we end up getting closer. And of course, I pull a lot of uh, my inspiration, you know, from my family, uh, from my wife, my kids. So you know, I, I have a, I have a good support team around. Me. Well, if you would like to come out and meet the Rick Allen, you can do that uh, tomorrow uh, and uh, at, in Bethesda and also at Tyson's Corner. Here are the times. It's 12 to 3 in Bethesda at the Wentworth Gallery there and then at the Wentworth Gallery in Tyson's Galleria from 6 to 9 p.m. Come out and meet Rick Allen and check out his beautiful artwork. Fantastic. What a great start to my day. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you. You're making our day. <laughs> Still ahead on Let's Talk Live after the break, we'll tell you how you can shop small this spring. Stay with us to see how local small businesses are getting your closet and your garden ready for the warm weather. And make sure you follow us on Twitter. We do live tweets during the show, and we will post amazing behind-the-scenes photos you don't want to miss. We'll be right back.